On this episode, we get behind the wheel of one of the best sports sedans you can buy today and ask the question, does anybody care about sports sedans anymore? That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. This is the 2022 Genesis G70. It's a mid-cycle refresh that finally brings the design in line with the rest of the family. The model we're testing today is the Sport Prestige, which features the top-spec 3.3-liter twin-turbocharged V6, good for up to 365 horsepower and 376 pound-feet of torque. This powers the rear wheels through a now-standard 8-speed automatic transmission. All-wheel drive is also available. EPA rates economy at up to 18 miles to the gallon in town and 27 on the highway. Prices you see it here, 51,945 US dollars, including destination. Everything about this refreshed G70 looks the part of the sophisticated sports sedan. From the gloss black 19 inch sport alloys wrapped in Michelin Pilot Sport tires, to the quilted seats, to the gorgeous black forest paint. Even the brakes are top shelf Brembo's. Unfortunately, the exhaust outlets are fake, but the side vents are real, albeit a little exaggerated. In the back, you'll find up to 10.5 cubic inches of storage capacity. Fold the second row down for larger objects. In the second row, we have seats that are very comfortable, we have a fold-down armrest with integrated cup holders. I can move the seat next to me if I need to adjust the passenger there for my own legroom, but can't do that on the driver for safety purposes, of course. You don't want to be messing with the driver while they're busy driving. I'm six foot one, legs and torso proportionate. This is where I would be sitting if I was driving. So sitting behind somebody like that, I actually do have a little bit of legroom, although it is clearly very tight. Um, but, you know, I could, I could deal with this for short trips. I also get USB charging socket there and a little hook to uh, hang my jackets. Does anybody wear jackets still? Hmm. Well, I don't. Let's check out up front. I really liked the last G70. In fact, we almost bought one for my wife, but she ultimately decided on the Crosstrek. Is that the only time in history somebody's cross-shopped a G70 and a Subaru Crosstrek? Probably. But ultimately, we went with the Crosstrek, and we have a whole video about that. Today, we're talking about this G70, and for 2022, what they've really done is bring this G70 up to the rest of the family specifications and looks. Here is a vehicle that is just honestly one of the best looking cars on the road and it's not just on the outside on the inside this thing also feels like a high-end luxury sports sedan we have this amazing steering wheel with all the controls integrated it's typical hyundai family stuff it has nice clicky paddle shifters that feel good to the hand plus the steering wheel also has two stages of heat which is a nice touch but just the leather quality they have here is top notch and that contrast stitching that also matches the quilted sides and the quilted seats, it just comes together as a package that is just phenomenal. And then down here, we have the little, kind of like a fish scale grind on this aluminum, and that just looks amazing. I mean, basically this whole car just looks amazing. The fact that it comes from the luxury division of Genesis is here nor there. It's just an amazing car. So this is available with a variety of powertrains, everything from a turbocharged four-cylinder with rear wheel drive up to a 3.3 liter twin turbocharged turbo with all wheel drive. However, the model we're driving here is kind of in the middle. This is the 3.3 liter turbo with rear wheel drive. And all of these now come with an automatic only. This is an eight speed automatic transmission. Yeah, the previous version, you could get a stick, that's now gone unfortunately. The gauge cluster is a little funny. They didn't fully commit to a digital display. Just the right half is digital. The left half is an analog speedo. 
when you use the blind spot camera system, it's all on the right side there because of course it's not digital on the left, which is a little funny. I mean, just fully commit guys. For the nav system, everybody gets a 10 inch unit, but it is very closely related to what you would find from Kia and Hyundai. It's basically the same system in their newest vehicles. Recently, I tested the Kia Sorento and I had a lot of problems finding what I wanted. I did a lot of just freestyle searches and it couldn't find anything. So let's give it a try on this one and see if they've made it better in the Genesis. Please say the POI name or address you want to find. Find the nearest Cafe Ladro. Five Boom, found. right there like it's supposed to do it. Clearly they are dumbing down the system in the Kia to help segment it so that it's not encroaching upon the Genesis. Uh, because this does what it's supposed to do, to be quite honest. Even though this is very, very similar to what you find in the Hyundai and the Kia, I like the graphics here better. They're easier to see with a quick glance, and that is really important when driving. And they have everything from, you know, XM satellite radio with their Winamp inspired graphics. It really kicks the Lana's ass. I, does anybody other than a Gen X person know what the heck I'm talking about? <laughs> Anyway, it does have satellite radio and it can also do FM and AM and all that stuff. Go back to the menu here. Uh, sounds of nature for people who are into that. Uh, I don't know why they keep putting that on there. I think it's just adding to the clutter and this has a clutter issue, that's for sure. And uh, let's see, we have a voice memo option. Want to record? This car is pretty good. In fact, I would totally buy one. Then we can play that back. This car's pretty good. Yeah, the sound quality is not great. I don't know why you wouldn't just use your phone for that, but you know, whatever, it's an option. Uh, and then also we have a lot of uh, safety stuff. Where's the safety stuff? Uh, see, this is the problem. You get too many options. It's under setup, vehicle, and then this is where you can configure uh, everything from your forward collision, your lane safety, your blind spot warning with integrated camera view, which is cool. There's also parking sonars, adaptive cruise control with lane centering and detection. And of course, if I go into reverse, I can see a rear view camera as well as a satellite view, which is pretty cool. And if I steer, I can see tracking lines, which is phenomenal. It's exactly what you want. This head unit also supports Apple CarPlay and it uses the older style USB. Once I plug it in, I answer a couple questions and boom, we have CarPlay. Now I can configure this to be full screen or to be part screen. I prefer it full screen because when I'm in the CarPlay experience, that's what I want. The panel here is actually just gorgeous. The colors are nice, they're accurate, the resolution super sharp. This is now one of my favorite displays that you can get in a car. It's just fantastic and of course it is fully integrated so if I want to do a search here I can do find the nearest Cafe Vida great boom there we go the air conditioning system is nice that it doesn't rely on the screen for everything so many of these systems now are just putting everything up here I like that we have easy to reach very easy to understand switch gear here it's just not very obvious, so it is integrated with the screen, but at least they give you dials down here. Of course, this has multiple drive modes, everything from eco to comfort to sport, and new for 2022, they have a new Sport Plus. What that does is it'll tighten up the suspension, tighten up the wheel, it'll also remove a layer of traction control so you can actually get this thing sideways, uh, but without completely losing farm. Now with all the features sorted, let's take it for a drive. Our test car came equipped with the Prestige and Advanced packages. What those offer are a number of really great features that in some cases you can't even get on a BMW without going way more expensive. So for example, rear limited slip differential to help put power down evenly. It also has adjustable suspension. When I put it into sport mode, it stiffens up. Let's put the throttle in and feel this as I go into compression and boom, so composed, so nice. Driving this, it just feels like a premium sports sedan. It does everything that I want. 
Now, I'm not sure I would take this on a track day. I'm not sure if it's quite set up for that. It looks great. It has tons of safety stuff. Yeah, it's just really the whole package. And it's kind of funny because this is such a great sports sedan at a time where people just aren't really caring that much about great sports sedans. It's all about crossovers and SUVs. It's not about sports sedans. But if you are in the market for a sports sedan, the G70 really offers something great. Let's talk about what's new for 2022. This model does get a new refresh externally and it gets a few new things on the inside. Instead of just having a sport mode, I now have a sport plus, which optimizes traction control for track situations. It's kind of like a race mode and you should not use it on public streets because you should never turn traction control off on public streets. The engine here is, of course, a twin turbocharged V6, but it is not their fancy new 3.5 liter. This is the same as last year's 3.3 liter twin turbo V6, but it is a great engine. It puts out lots of power. It's quick, Woo! makes nice noises. It's just a joy to drive. I love this car, this engine, this combination. Mwah. Just fantastic. And let's talk about those drive modes. You, of course, have Eco, which tries to get you the best economy, but this car really isn't about economy. You can do Comfort, which smooths out the suspension because this vehicle is equipped with the optional adjustable suspension. Bump it up again, we get Sport. What that does is it tightens up that adjustable suspension. It also squishes me in the seats a little more by inflating the side bolsters. It also makes the transmission way quicker to engage. It also holds the gears longer and the steering also tightens up a little bit. And then we have, of course, that Sport Plus, which is the track mode, which disengages traction control and all that. And of course, yes, this is also equipped with launch control, but we'll get to that later. There is a huge difference between sport and comfort mode. Right now I'm in comfort and it's just soaking up and it's a little sproingy, but it's not too bad. Uh, when I go to sport, I can feel a lot more of the road, uh, which is going to be great when I'm really on throttle here. Putting it into sport or sport plus, in addition to all of the other changes that happened in the vehicle, this one has the um, adaptive exhaust, which means that it opens up a valve in the exhaust to give me an extra three horsepower. Three. And that is part of one of the add-on packages. And it sounds great. I think the biggest misstep with this vehicle is this combination gauge cluster where it's a traditional Speedo on the left and you have this screen on the right. It just doesn't look right. And it doesn't really give me any new information here. I mean, as I'm toggling through the different options, it's just adjusting the center. Anything with just a middle screen can do that. Any Hyundai or Kia can do that. Uh, this one, yeah, why, why is the TAC digital? I, I don't know. Maybe it changes in eco mode? Nope, still just a TAC. I, I'm not seeing any change whatsoever in that display. There's something great about rear wheel drive cars, just the way they feel as you stab that throttle while going around a corner. I'm sorry, as you gently apply power as you're going around the corner, it just, you can feel it steering around the corner with the rear wheels as the power is shifting back there. It is just so cool. I'm gonna jump onto the freeway here. I'm gonna keep it on and let's just keep it on comfort. I think this will be fine. It's one of the problems with a car like this is that you wanna drive fast and Unfortunately, around here, not everybody does. I just feel like I'm driving a whole lot of untapped potential. Okay, with this little jaunt on the freeway, it's gonna give us an opportunity to test out the adaptive cruise control with lane centering. I'm gonna turn it on. I'm going to hit the center steering button, which will give me a little green steering wheel, which shows that it's now steering for me. I'm going to accelerate well past what the car in front of me is doing, but it, the vehicle is never gonna go faster than the car in front. It's checking the distance and maintaining that based on my setting here. So as we go around the corner, let's see how well this keeps us centered. Steering, 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 steering. It's actually doing a really good job. I didn't really expect it to do that poorly because 
I've used these systems before and they usually work well and this one works very well. So I think anybody who's looking for that feature will be really happy here. Because of course, the whole point of the system isn't an autopilot, it is designed to help um, make you more relaxed on longer trips, longer journeys. You know, you're not like steering all the time. You let the car do the work for you. After I drove for myself, I just take my foot off the gas and it picks up where it left off. We're currently doing 70 because the car in front of me is uh, doing 70 as well. We're just pacing it. Nice. Of course, like any self-respecting sports sedan, the G70 does feature launch control. This is a special program to optimize engine output and traction control systems to produce the best possible acceleration from a dead stop. Let's give it a try and see if we can hit 60 before the bend in the road. This is a rear wheel drive vehicle, so we have to optimize everything to get the maximum zero to 60 performance. To do that, I'm gonna switch it into the Sport Plus. That tightens up my seat, the little bolsters kind of inflate, and now I'm, I'm feeling like I'm way more stuck in. Um, the gauge cluster, actually the safety systems, instead of just showing a car, it now shows a racetrack on either side, which is cool. Uh, but more than just that, it's gonna optimize throttle, it's gonna optimize traction, and this also of course has launch control, which means that it'll also optimize zero to 60. So I'm now gonna hold down traction control for about three seconds. It now tells me traction and stability control disabled. What that really means is that launch control is now enabled. Now, you should never do this on a public road. We are on a closed road right now, so this is all safe. The road is a little dirty under the wheel, so we should see a little bit of wheel spin, but hopefully not too much. So now I'm gonna use my left foot and hold down the brake pretty hard. I'm gonna mosh the throttle. It says launch control ready. Three, two, one, release the brake, and away we go. And 60 in 5.02 seconds. Now keep in mind, this is not like a high-end M car. This is more to compete against like the entry level, uh, not really entry level M, but more like the higher end three series cars uh, from BMW in that it has a lot of the same kind of level of performance and features. But with this car, you don't have to pay extra for the stuff that you really should just get. I mean, this has a limited slip differential in the rear. And yeah, it is an option on this vehicle, but it is an option that you want to have. And it still is priced at about $52,000 for what is a very competitive vehicle in this class. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, leave a comment. Uh, we'd love to hear what you think. And I'll see you again right here next week.